Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Dana Perez and I love traveling to Italy. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some Tuscany travel tips. I went on a vacation in Tuscany last summer and I have so many tips to share with you from where to stay, how to get around, where you should go and all of the things. So this is gonna be a long video filled with so many helpful tips for your trip to Tuscany. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So when I was doing research for our trip to Tuscany, I read books, I watched YouTube videos, I was in so many blog posts just because I had so many questions when it came to traveling to Tuscany. My idea of a perfect Tuscany vacation was basically having like the quintessential experience, tasting wine, having a countryside experience. So I wanted to be in the countryside. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the top tips I do have a Tuscany vlog. You can check it out and kind of see what we did. But this video is all about tips because in that video, there were so many questions. Tuscany is a region in Italy. So that includes Florence, Pisa, Montepulciano, Siena, and other towns within Tuscany. So in this video, I'm going to be talking more about the southern part of Tuscany. Of course, you should see Florence. I also have a Florence vlog if you want to check that out. Definitely allow some time to visit Florence. And when you do, book like an extra few days because you can totally do day trips from Florence to other parts of Tuscany, the northern part, like the wine region of Chianti, Siena, Pisa. Those are all very reachable from Florence and I highly suggest just like basing yourself in Florence and doing the northern part of Tuscany on day trip. It was just one day trip from Florence. It was like 12 hours long but it was so much fun and we got to see everything in the north in just one day. We went to Siena. We did a wine tasting in Chianti. Then we went to San Gimignano and then we finally went to Pisa. That was all in one day. I will leave that link to the tour down below. It was a fantastic tour. Like we could not recommend it more. Even though it was so long, we got to see everything on our wish list in just one day. However, we wanted to have our own Tuscany experience on our own. So that's what this video is going to be all about. If you want that perfect countryside escape, where should you stay in Tuscany? So Tuscany, like I said, is a huge region and all of the books that I read, all the blog post I read, everyone said you have to go to the Val d'Orcia, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is absolutely stunning. So I love having beautiful things around me with beautiful views. So absolutely that is where we looked to book where we stayed. The great thing about the Val d'Orcia is that it's a bigger region and the towns that surround the Val d'Orcia are Multicino, Pienza, and Multipucciano. And those are great, great places to see while you are in Tuscany. So I highly recommend finding a place near the Val d'Orcia and once you're down there everything is pretty much like a 30 minute drive from each other so it's a great place to kind of base yourself in. All right should you stay in an Augury Turismo or a hotel? If you have no idea what an Augury Turismo is those are very common stays in Tuscany so it's basically staying in a farmhouse or on a working farm. This was a concept to help out farmers to earn extra money not just from their farming but they could also rent out rooms in their farmhouse house and I absolutely recommend staying in an Augury Turismo. Now there's all kinds of different Augury Turismos. There's ones that are more luxurious. There's ones that are like on the lower end. We found one. It was very budget friendly. I think it was under a hundred dollars a night. It was actually pretty big and it had like the most iconic view. We were right in the middle of the Val d'Orcia so and we were located on top of a hill. So from our place where we stayed we got to see the surrounding area and the sunsets there were just absolutely incredible. So, and for like the full Tuscan experience to stay in where we stayed, it was a working wheat farm and an olive oil farm and they sold the olive oil there. So it was just a really fun overall experience. Now they do have hotels in Tuscany and the hotels are mostly located within the smaller like medieval villages. Some pros of staying in an Agri Turismo are it's authentic, you get that countryside feel and two, there is parking. Parking will be kind of like an issue sort of in Tuscany depending on how busy it is but with an Augury Turismo you know that you're going to have like a parking spot right next to where you're staying. You could also stay in the famous medieval towns like Multipucciano, Multicino, Pienza but there's one thing is parking. These towns were built years ago, thousands of years ago, and they were not made for modern times. So parking in these towns is a bit tricky. And as a non-resident of the town, you can't drive within the town center. So if you do decide to stay in those places, you're going to have to park your car kind of like on the outskirts of town and walk with your luggage up many, many 
flights of stairs. I honestly think you're way better off just staying in, in the countryside in an agriturismo and visiting these towns on day trip. The only good side to staying in a town is that you will be really close to dinner restaurants so you don't have to drive anywhere to get to dinner. You can kind of walk somewhere and get dinner. However, when we were in Tuscany, we went to a different town every night for dinner and we got to try new places and the drive to the dinners were no more than 10 minutes. I don't think staying in the towns is absolutely necessary just because the parking, walking with your luggage, and when you want to leave where you're staying, you're going to have to find parking every single time, which can get a bit tricky in the towns. Next thing is getting around Tuscany. Do you need a car? The answer is yes, you need a car. Now there is a way that you can see Tuscany without a car, but I really don't recommend it. They do have buses, but we're talking about the countryside of Italy and I don't think you want to base your vacation off of a bus schedule and the buses only run to certain areas. So if you want to do it like on your own, 100% rent a car. I was terrified of renting a car. I wish you could go there without renting a car. But honestly, as soon as I got the car, my fears went away. Driving in Italy isn't as bad as what they seem to make it online. I feel like I was so nervous to drive around Italy. I was like actually terrified, like my heart was pumping. But once I got on the road, I was like, this is easier than I thought it would. This is easier than driving where I'm from, Wisconsin. There was hardly any cars around. It wasn't that big deal at all. So if you are nervous about driving in Italy, trust me, it isn't as bad as it seems. Of course, the Italians drive pretty fast, but I'll go over some driving tips later in this video. Some things you need to know before driving in Italy. One, you need an international driver's license. You can get this at AAA. It's about 25, 30 bucks and it expires every year. So every year you need to get a new international driver's license. It's basically just like a piece of paper stating that you can drive. In the country, there is no extra tests. It's just a piece of paper to have that the car rental companies are gonna ask for. Another thing to look out for is parking in Italy. If you see blue lines when you're parking, that means you have to pay for the parking spot. Don't just park there and not pay. You'll go to a kiosk, pay for the parking. It's usually by hour. And then you put the slip in your car. So you do have to pay for parking when you are in Italy. The white lines are for residents only. And if you park within the white lines, you will get a fine. So look out for the blue parking. They also do have free parking. Just know how to park when you are in Italy. The ZTO, which is the limited traffic zones in Italy. So a lot of these towns are very small. They're medieval. And driving within them is only reserved for the people who live in the towns. So a lot of the towns in the center, they have a ZTO. So you cannot drive within the town center, which is why I don't really recommend staying in the town center, especially if you have a lot of luggage like I do. You'll see the signs as you're driving that you are entering a ZTL, so don't go past the sign. It's very clear, so you won't have a question, but basically you can't drive within those areas. And whenever we were driving to a town in Tuscany, we knew there was the ZTL. We coordinated our GPS from where we were staying to a parking lot rather than just the town and finding one. We kind of already knew where the parking lot was. And the parking lots are very clear because not many people can park in the towns. So the parking is very clear where you should park. Obviously you want the best parking spot. So sometimes we would kind of lap around to see if we can get closer. If you go visit the towns during the afternoon, whoever came in the morning has the best parking spot. So if you don't feel like walking a lot when you are visiting the towns, definitely consider touring the towns on an earlier time just so you can get the best parking spot. And another thing to consider is that a lot of the cars in Italy are all manual cars. So if, if you do not know how to drive a manual car, you're gonna have to get an automatic car, which is a special request. When we rented our car, I needed automatic, I can't drive manual. And I rented the last automatic car in the region of Rome. I'm telling you, they book out early. So honestly, you definitely need to reserve your car well in advance, especially if you want automatic, like you have to book it even before you book your hotel, I would say. Automatic cars are just not common in Italy, and so they don't have a lot of them. If you know how to drive manual, congratulations, you get to save money because the automatic cars are more expensive to rent per day, and they have tons of manual cars. Like if you drive manual, you don't really need to rent it out as early as the automatic cars, because those go by very quickly. And the thing about driving in Tuscany, where we stayed right in the middle of the Baldorch, 
Georgia, everything was within a 30 minute drive from where we were staying because we were very centrally located. We drove 30 minutes to go to Malticino. It was about a 15 minute drive to Pienza and a 30 minute drive to Malta Pucciano. And so everything was kind of centered around where we were staying. So I highly recommend staying there if you want to see both of the wine regions of Malticino and Malta Pucciano. Another thing about driving in Italy, the Italian drivers, they drive very fast. So honestly, once they have the opportunity to pass you, they will like don't you don't have to necessarily drive faster because they're riding your butt because they will ride your butt until they can pass you. I was going to go like faster than what I felt comfortable with. But once they have the opportunity to pass you, they will. That's the only thing I think you have to look out for when driving in Italy is that the other drivers are going to go very fast. A lot of questions in my video asked me where I rented my car and I'm going to go over the rental process of getting a car in Italy. I rented my car online at Europe Cars. And the reason why I did that, I definitely looked on rentalcars.com. It's like an aggregator for Avits, Hertz, and other European car rental companies. I was booking mine kind of last minute, my rental car, and I needed automatic. And this company called Europe Car was the only company that had one automatic car left for my date. So that's why I booked with them. So I booked my car right where I got off the cruise. Now, a lot of you are probably coming in either from Rome or Florence. So if you are renting a car, you can rent it from the airports of Florence or Rome. But I, I was renting my car in a less popular place than the airport. So I rented my car in Chivachia. But when you're renting your car, if you're coming from an airport, you're gonna have way more options with car rental companies. If you have a preferred car rental company, they probably have more availability at the airport, especially automatic cars. Since I was like in a smaller town, I was very limited on where I could rent my car from. The other reason why I went with this company called Auto Europe was because I wanted to drop off my car in a small town called Chiuzi. I honestly since, the, since this was my first time driving in Italy, I wasn't really comfortable of driving within the big cities like Florence or Rome. I just like, I'll rent a car, but I only want to drive in the countryside. So if you are a person who may feel a bit uncomfortable driving within a big city, there are options for you. I dropped my car off in this small town called Chiusi. And from there, I took a regional train to Florence, which led me right into the center of Florence. Here is the train map. So you can kind of pick a town along this map to either rent your car from or drop off from. And you can take a train from Florence or Rome to one of these other small towns if you wanna completely avoid driving in Florence. That is an option. Otherwise, if you rent from Florence, to drive down to the part where I'm talking about is gonna be around a three hour, two and a half hour, three hour drive. And that's the other thing, I didn't wanna drive that long in a car. And that means if you do fly into Florence, you could stay in Florence for a few days, check out the Northern part of Florence, take the regional train down to one of the small towns in Tuscany and rent a car from one of these smaller places. That could be an option for you. They do have like Avits and Hurt in these locations. So all right, let's talk about things to do. You know, we have to talk about wine because when you are visiting Tuscany, you of course have to go to the Tuscan wineries like how amazing is that like I was so pumped to go to the wineries and this was probably one of my favorite parts of visiting Tuscany and I'm gonna give you all of the wine tasting tips and how to, I got so many questions for my video when you're staying in the southern part of Tuscany there are two kind of main wine regions one you have Malticino and their wine that they make is the Brunello di Malticino and then you have Montepulciano and they make the Nobile di Montepulciano so those are like the two kind of main winery regions in the southern part of Tuscany. If you go to the nor northern part of Tuscany, you're going to be trying all kinds of Chianti wines. So in the south, those are your two kind of options. So, and the really unique thing about the wine region in the southern part of Tuscany is that each winery has mo like microclimates within them. So it's really interesting to hear from the winemakers how different their wine is, even though the next winery could be down the road, there's a whole different climate. It's just like so wild and I just appreciate wine so much more after that trip. We learned so much. I felt like we were on like a wine class every day. We learned so much about wine within our week that we were there. I can't wait to go back and learn even more. So when I got to Tuscany, the first thing I asked our host was like, where are the wineries? Cause we actually didn't really do our research before we went, which is why this video is gonna be super helpful. And he looked at me like I was crazy because he just gave me this map. And on the map, there was like hundreds of dots. And he's like, that's all the wineries in just one region. 
content. So there are hundreds of wineries that you can visit. So obviously you can't visit them all. I will also leave this map down below as a download so you can see where they are. And they also list the name of the winery if they offer tastings, their email and their phone number. It's gonna be super helpful when you wanna make a reservation to visit the winery. During our time in Tuscany, we did a few different wine tastings. And the most interesting thing about the wine tastings that we did, they were all different. They were all different types of wine tastings. So we had some more formal ones where we had, where we paid a price for like five wines. I think it was like 35 euros per person. And that included five wines. These were more, these were older vintages. That's why the, the price was a bit higher. There was also ones where it, we tasted a few different wines and it was free because we bought a bottle. There was also ones where we paid three euros or four euros per glass that we got to taste. Then there was one where we didn't even know what the prices were. We just sat down and they gave us a few tastings of the wine and we paid a few euros just for the tasting, like 10 euros. And then there's one where we went to a counter and they said, hey, you can taste our wine. We won't charge you anything if you buy a bottle. So there's like all different types of ways the wineries will go about wine tasting. So it really depends on where you go. Now, how did we pick where we went? We saw this map, we were like, there are so many wineries, right? So we honestly just picked one. We just picked on the map. Now, if you are really into wine and you wanna go to a specific place, I am just a more casual drinker of wine. I appreciate the wine process, but I'm not a person that's like really into like names and stuff like that. Like I just wanted to taste wine in Tuscany and buy a few bottles, of course. So we kind of just picked randomly on a map. Here are some like tips about going about wine taste. The first biggest tip is you must have a wine tasting reservation. They need, let the winery know that you're coming. Most of these wineries don't have people there just sampling wine, unless you go to like a very famous place. Like we went to Contucci Winery, which was in the heart of Montepulciano. And it's very famous. It's like the oldest winery in that place. So they always have people there. That was a more casual winery where you just walked in, tasted a few, and it was free if you bought a bottle. So that was more casual and it was in the town center. But these other places, they don't have people on staff like just readily available to give you wine tastings. So it's really important that you have a reservation and that they know you're coming. Another thing about tasting wine in Italy is that they take their mid afternoon breaks very seriously if not all cases, all, everything kind of shuts down from like a certain time. And again, every winery is different. Some shut down, some don't. So if you are doing wine tasting in the midday, they may be closed. So definitely email where you want to go or call. I have listed some emails and phone numbers from this like PDF that you can arrange before you go. And honestly, each winery has its own vibe. So to me, there's hundreds of them. Literally, you could drive down a road and pass like five wineries. Just let them know that you're coming. You should be good to go. So we went to a few different wineries. I'll quickly go over the ones that we went to. You don't have to go to the ones that we went to because there's literally hundreds. But one of them was called Franco Pancetti. And I like theirs because they had like a little brochure of like different tasting styles. So we did like, I think it was like 35 euros, tasted five Brunello. We had a small tour of where they make the wine and then we had an outdoor kind of tasting and they usually bring you like little small crackers. So that one I like because we were paying a price up front and then it was more of like a longer experience. That one kind of took like an hour, two hours. It was like also a hundred degrees and we're tasting red wine. So that's a skill in and of itself. But we also went to one called Val de Suga, which was on a beautiful estate. That one you can arrange for tours of the vineyard, but you can also just go and taste wine casually at a counter and taste all the different wines for that one. Then we also went to one in Multipulciano and that one was called Monvi. It was an organic winery. And honestly, there, there are hundreds of them. Go online, type winery, and some wineries will have websites so you can kind of reserve online. And there are some famous wineries. Like if you, if you search like top wineries in Tuscany, those are probably the most popular ones and they might not have availability because everyone's just going to those. Branch out, find some new ones and you'll love the experience because it's all different and it's a must to do in Tuscany. If you like a wine, definitely buy a bottle. Not only are you supporting the winery and the vineyards, you can get a really good deal. So we bought a bottle of a 2015, which was a great year for all of the wines in this region. And it was like a Reserva bottle and we got it for 50 euros. 
in Tuscany. I went to Total Wine here in New Jersey and I found the same bottle the same year that we got and it was over $100. So I felt like I won the jackpot when I saw that because it was like, wow, do you really save money if you buy bottles in Italy and bring it over? It depends. And all the bottles that we were tasting ranged from maybe like 15 euros a bottle all the way up to maybe the highest price, maybe like 70 or more per bottle. But on average, we're paying around 20 euros they will give you all of the tips when you're tasting them because they know way more about wine than I do, but they will give you all of the tips and they'll tell you which was the best year to buy. But the pricing wasn't actually that bad that I thought. And if you do like a bottle of wine, you could always have it shipped to the US. The average price for shipping for the US was around 65 euros per case. So we actually got a case of wine, 65 euros, plus the bottles of wine that we bought. It was a bit pricey, but they keep it chilled in like perfect conditions. And they waited until late fall to actually ship it to the UK into consideration that the wine needs to be at a certain temperature to last longer. And before you go tasting wine, definitely like learn more about the region. I feel like they appreciate when you just, when you know a bit about the wine that you're tasting. The first winery that we went to, we were just like, we had no idea and we're like, oh, like maybe we should like do a bit of research before we go into more wineries. Cause it was just kind of like, we're excited. We're tasting wine in Italy. But like we needed to learn a bit more and appreciate more what they're doing. And lastly, like I said, every winery will go about wine tasting differently across the board 100 make sure you have either a reservation let them know that you're coming and they confirm that you're coming because they don't have like they don't have extra staff just to do a tasting especially on the smaller vineyards like ones that we went to some towns to visit when you are in the southern part of tuscany Multicino. so a lot of the wineries in Multicino the Brunello de Multicino wineries are going to be on the outskirts of the like medieval town but you should definitely go visit the medieval town. They have actually like a wine shop in the medieval town that like hands out samples of different wineries within the region. So that's also a great way to do more than one winery tasting is doing it within the towns themselves. Like honestly, you'll see wine tasting everywhere. You'll get some in. Also, you have to visit Monte Pucciano, which is beautiful, very hilly. So that one, it was like, a hike to get up to i'm telling you and within the town itself there was just so many hills and there, and of course they have churches and just that historic feeling to all of the towns it totally reminded me of game of thrones like when i was there i was like oh this is like game of thrones like every town has its own like walls and it was just so cool and then another town you should visit is pienza pienza is like the only town if you want to stay if you're like set on staying in a town pienza is like probably one of the towns i would say you could probably stay in because it's not very hilly like the other ones. Like you're not really driving up a super big hill. So you won't have to carry your luggage a far way in Pienza. So it's very walkable. It's very flat, which I liked. And they also offer amazing views of the surrounding area. So beautiful. You can grab a lunch there. And there was a lot of cheese shops in Pienza as well. And then of course the region that you have to see, even if you're not staying in the Val d'Orcia, if you stay nearby, you can easily drive there, drive around. That's where they filmed gladiator scenes. So they have like gladiator like points where they filmed that movie. To me, I think it's beautiful. So I wanted to stay in the Val d'Orcia, but if you aren't staying there, you can totally drive through the country roads and take in the views. And if you wanna stop for like pictures or something, you can like park on the side of the road, get out of the car and take some pictures. There's not many people on the roads to begin with. So you can totally stop and take pictures of the beautiful scenery. There's this beautiful church in the middle of Val d'Orcia that you should totally see. It's so quaint and beautiful. And I've seen photos of it just looking online to visit Tuscany. This church popped up and it was a bit kind of hard to find, but once we found it, we parked our car, we took a little bit of a walk and we found it and it was just the most beautiful church. So definitely put that one on your list. Another thing that you can do is visit a thermal bath in the Southern part of Tuscany. They're all over. There's a very famous one that everyone like goes to and it's very busy, it's very Instagrammable. The one that I'm gonna tell you is less crowded. It's a lesser known thermal bath. It's called Bagni San Filippo. Very beautiful. The water has like sulfur. It's really good for your skin. So beautiful. Your skin will get like so dry after it, like salt, but the landscape was just stunning. And absolutely you have to visit at least one thermal bath when you are in Tuscany. Let's talk about food really quickly. The food in Tuscany, there is gonna be a lot of 
beef, a lot of truffles, a lot of heavy creams and sauces, which I was so surprised. This is me thinking Italian food is just one type of food. We have the red sauce, pizza, which is very Southern Italian. In Tuscany, it's all about the steak, truffles, cream sauces, which are there, take it all in, order the truffle pasta, it's so good. We went to a few different restaurants. I'll talk about some that I really like. The first one is called Ristorante Enoteca La Terrazza. And this one was the most romantic restaurant I think I've ever been to. It was beautiful. It was like I was in a movie. It was so serene. I can't, I can't believe it. I was just looking at a painting while we were eating. The service was a bit slow. I think they're a bit understaffed, but overall, if you have like a two hour, three hour dinner time, you'll be fine. They don't rush you during dinner. Dinner is more of like an experience. So it, we were there for a long time, but I didn't mind because the view was just so beautiful and it was just a beautiful place to visit. Next restaurant that we went to was Ristorante Alavena. And I believe this one was a Michelin star restaurant. I don't know if they earn their star every year, but it was, it is, or was Michelin star. Amazing plating, delicious food. They have a cute little outdoor patio. And then this one, Ristorante La Taverna de Barbarossa. They had the best truffle pasta. Al ordered it. And we even went to a very like famous place in Florence. And this one was way better and a bit cheaper than the one in Florence. It was so good. And this restaurant, you actually get the view of like, where they filmed the gladiator. So the view is stunning. You're surrounded by cypress trees. Every corner in Tuscany is just so picturesque. And then before I end this video, don't forget about Florence. Like I said, if you fly into Florence, stay in Florence, of course, for a few days. We actually stayed in Florence for five full days, which is a long time, honestly. We could have gone easily with four full days, but we did one day was for that day trip where we went to Chianti, Siena, San Gimignano, and Pisa and it was the best day trip ever because we didn't have to do all of that stuff when we were in the southern part of Tuscany. All right, so there goes my Tuscany travel tips. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you thought so. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I love traveling to Italy and I love giving you Italy travel tip. With that, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next one.